Today on The Travel Magazine, we travel to Mexico City, a modern city with a mystical past, a city of towering pyramids, colorful traditions, a city of profound history, founded by an ancient civilization. And even today, Mexico City continues to evolve. Mexico is both chaotic and fascinating. It is the largest city in the world with a population of 23 million people. Now that translates into 7,500 inhabitants per square kilometer. And a subway system carrying five and a half million people a day. It's 10,000 churches and more than 100 museums. Hello, I'm Sandra Neal. Welcome to this edition of The Travel Magazine and Mexico City. Mexico City is located in the central region of the country between the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. The largest city in the world is an intoxicating mix of culture and commerce, architecture and industry. It's a mecca for historians. And it's also a city of organized chaos. Over two and a half million vehicles navigate the city streets. So many, in fact, that the government devised a system to combat further pollution and traffic jams. Cars are marked by one of five different colored stickers, and one day out of the week, all the cars with that day's corresponding color are restricted from the roads. But you can get almost anywhere in Mexico City on the subway. Though it's incredibly busy during the week, it's cheaper and faster than driving on the streets above. Strolling the city is another way to see palaces, cathedrals, churches, and street vendors. Amidst all this commotion, it's easy to develop an appetite. Luckily, dining can be found in every corner of the city, from expensive restaurants to cantinas and street vendors offering a variety of local dishes. But this is only a small taste of what the city has to offer. Mexico City's downtown spans an incredible 700 city blocks, which keeps these rickshaws very busy. The historical area houses some of the oldest and most cherished buildings of the city. But amidst all this hustle and bustle, the locals barely have time to notice. Mexico City was originally the capital of the Aztec's mighty empire. At that time, the area used to be a series of islands surrounded by canals. And even today, modern Mexico City is coping with its unstable ground. The Aztecs built Mexico City on a series of islands back in the 13th century. Later, the Spaniards filled in the canals. So what's actually happened over time is that parts of the city have sunk. For example, the cathedral behind me, St. Francis of Assisi, well, it used to stand right here on street level. Today, it's two meters below street level. Unfortunately, nothing can be done to stop this church from sinking, but that doesn't detract from its beauty. Inside, the church is breathtaking. The beautiful hand-carved altar, covered in gold leaf, is the crowning achievement as it towers over the onlooker. The church also houses numerous paintings and statues depicting various Roman Catholic saints. Locals love to come in from the hectic city streets to sit in this quiet church and pray as people have here for hundreds of years. Back on the streets of the Old Town, we travel toward Mexico City's famous theater, Palacio de Bellas Artes. Construction began on this building in 1904, but it took 30 years to complete. The exterior is turn-of-the-century Art Nouveau, decorated by finely detailed sculptures and Carrera marble from Italy. This beautiful theater is also sinking into the ground. It's moved 12 feet since it opened nearly 70 years ago. This is Mexico City's Zocalo, second only to Moscow's Red Square in size. Facing the square is the Palacio Nacional, where the presidential offices are located and where Diego Rivera's murals are displayed. But the jewel of the Zocalo is the Metropolitan Cathedral. The Metropolitan Cathedral is the largest church in Latin America and took nearly three centuries to complete. Its towers rise 67 meters above the city's main square. Mm -hmm. 
For many inhabitants of Mexico City, the Metropolitan Cathedral is a place of great importance in their lives. As the largest and best known church in the city, it's become the center of the Roman Catholic community. People come to pray, and children come to learn the history and beliefs in which their faith is rooted. The rituals and traditions of the church are carried out each day without fail. The beauty and enormity of the interior of the cathedral is staggering. There are 14 altars, including the main altar, the altar of pardon, and the altar of kings, which took 22 years to carve. Like the Palacio de Bellas Artes, the Metropolitan was built in more than one style, Baroque, Gothic, and Neoclassical, giving the cathedral an eclectic look. While visiting the cathedral, we were given special permission to enter the sacristy, the holiest room in the church, where only priests are usually allowed to enter. The sacristy is decorated with oil paintings completed in the 17th and 18th centuries. Even the wood and gold frames surrounding the paintings are works of art. It was an exceptional opportunity to see a room of such exquisite beauty. This hectic market is where Mexico City comes to shop. We navigate our way through endless crowds to look at the goods on packed tables. The name of the game is to find the best price. And if the right price can't be found, the vendors here are always willing to barter. Open seven days a week, the market is a cultural event. Besides the locals, tourists turn up in droves to see what it's like to shop in another country. The first lesson, not to be passive. Here the most persistent and sometimes the loudest wins. Absolutely anything can be found here, from watches to keychains and even all varieties of tools. Families all come together to do their shopping and like any large event, it's also a social affair. Every culture has a different way of shopping and to some visitors used to quiet malls and set prices, the market of Mexico City may seem overwhelming but it's definitely one of many adventures you can enjoy in Mexico City. Coming up, we'll witness a courageous tradition performed by the Flyers of Papantla. Then we'll travel north to Teotihuacan, the ancient pyramid city of mystery. And later on the Travel Magazine, we'll enjoy the music and fun of the mariachi. We'll be back with more of the Travel Magazine in Mexico City right after this, so stay with us. Welcome back to the Travel Magazine and the world's largest city. Once you've had a chance to take in many of the sights of Mexico City, a worthwhile excursion a short drive away is Teotihuacan. Our journey begins with an ancient ritual. Yo me llamo Adolfo San Martín. Yo me llamo Magdalena García. Yo me llamo Vicente Jiménez. These men are the Flyers of Papantla. They practice a traditional ceremony that is over a thousand years old, a tradition that requires concentration and coordination between all participants. The ritual takes place high atop a pole just outside of the ancient pyramid city of Teotihuacan. The purpose of the ceremony is to pray to the gods for rain to ensure a good harvest of crops. 
The first to climb the pole is the leader, who begins the flight by playing the Song of Pardon on his flute, called the Cherimya, while dancing on a drum atop the pole. According to legend, the music is played to contact the gods of the sun, the wind, the moon, and the rain. Each of these gods is symbolized in the cardinal points that also represent the four corners of the earth. During the flight, each man makes 13 revolutions, contributing to the total of 52, one for every week of the calendar year. Together, as they spiral toward the earth, they symbolize falling rain. My name is Josefina, welcome travel magazine. Bienvenidos a las pirámides. Dating back to 100 BC, the pyramids of Teotihuacan are among the most important archaeological ruins in Mexico. Located 50 kilometers northwest of Mexico City, this ancient place is a must-see when traveling through Mexico. And there's a lot to cover in a day, so start out early. Built in the third century, very little is known about the creators of Teotihuacan. Abandoned in 650 AD, it was later occupied by the Aztecs who named the city. Unearthed in the 1800s, what you see spans two square kilometers, but it's only one-tenth of the city. Teotihuacan once covered 12 square kilometers. Today, all that remains are the pyramids, sacrificial altars, and some of the dwellings. At one time, these stone structures were covered in stucco and brightly painted. Little by little, archaeologists from around the world are piecing together the bits of information available at the site in hopes of discovering more about the people who built the city and where they came from. Though eroded by time, the site is still overwhelming. Imagine what it must have looked like when an entire civilization lived here. A three kilometer long path running through the city center is called the Avenue of the Dead. It begins north at the Pyramid of the Moon and runs south to the Citadel. The Citadel houses the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent god. Archaeologists believe that the temple was built in 200 AD. Quetzalcoatl was thought to have been the creator of Earth as well as the calendar. Many different serpent sculptures decorate the temple. This is the god Quetzalcoatl. Serpents are depicted emerging from rings of feathers and adorned with seashell and conch carvings, indicating that trading with coastal civilizations may have occurred. It isn't known whether or not the city's original inhabitants worshipped Quetzalcoatl as the Maya, Toltec and Aztec people did but these four-ton statues haven't lost any of their mystique. Next to the temple is the citadel. This giant square is located at the south end of the city, where over 100,000 people could have gathered. It was thought to be the hub of economic and cultural activity. Situated on the east side of the Avenue of the Dead is the Pyramid of the Sun, one of the most impressive ancient structures in the Western Hemisphere. The Pyramid of the Sun is the largest structure in Teotihuacan. Built on top of a cave, it's 243 steps up to the top, so here I go. Let's hope I can make it. Thousands of tourists like me make the trek to the top of the pyramid every year. In ancient times, a temple would have been placed on top of the pyramid where high priests made human sacrifices to the gods. The pyramid is made up of over 100 million sun-dried blocks. Oh boy. You know, I'm not even halfway up this pyramid and I'm already out of breath. We're climbing up to about 2,700 feet above sea level. Did you hear the thunder earlier? Let's hope I make it to the top and back to the bottom before it rains. Oh boy. In ancient times, victims were actually carried to the top. Now I know why. 
The Pyramid of the Sun is the third largest pyramid in the world. And unlike the pyramids in Egypt, it is not a burial chamber. Climbing up these steps, I try to imagine what it would have been like to live here almost 2,000 years ago and to be one of the workers who built this pyramid. Well, just a couple more steps to the top. That wasn't as bad as I thought. We're 65 meters up. You get an amazing view of the city here. And of course, this is where the human sacrifices were offered. Because the pyramid was built on top of a cave that had a spring, it was thought that the offerings were made to the rain god. And the gods must be with us today because it really does look like rain. I'm not sure if the flyers of Pompantla had anything to do with this rain, but with it, we ended our tour of the ancient city of Teotihuacan. Coming up next on The Travel Magazine, we visit a bullfight ring and take a look at Mexico's most popular pastime. Welcome back to the Travel Magazine and the world's largest city, Mexico City. As we've seen, this is a place where city blocks run in the hundreds, lined with stunning palaces, cathedrals, and museums, as well as dozens of monuments. This statue is of the Mexican hero Benito Juarez. Thanks to his efforts over 100 years ago, the people of Mexico have a strong nationality and fierce national pride whether it's at a soccer game or ringside at a wrestling match. Even though wrestling is considered Mexico's national sport, every Sunday when in season, 90,000 people come to the Plaza de Toro de Mexico, the largest ring in the world, to enjoy another pastime, the bullfight. Like the striking artwork of other buildings we've seen in downtown Mexico City, this arena is no exception. Intricate sculptures and paintings decorate the interior, depicting many different matadors who can often achieve the status of celebrity. The paintings illustrate scenes from the fights, brave men and women confronting wild animals as thousands cheer on. But the building wasn't designed for comfort. The seats are all made of cement, but very few of the spectators ever stay sitting down. The bullfights can cause pandemonium amongst a crowd, stirring the onlookers to a fevered pitch. Armed with nothing but a sword and red cape, numerous matadors have thrilled the crowds of Mexico. But none other than Mexico's most famous bullfighter, Fermin Espinosa, Armalita, the maestro de maestros. Though an ancient tradition, the bullfights still manage to really get a crowd going. And so does another great Mexican passion, soccer. Mexicans seem to be born soccer fans. And if they're lucky enough to get any kind of seat to watch a game in Mexico City Stadium, it practically means a day off from work. It's obvious they're fanatical about supporting the home team. The sound in the stadium is deafening even before the match begins. here are always sold out, with thousands left outside trying to get in, in a city of 32 million, with a stadium that only holds 110,000 people. The chances of getting a ticket are about 1 in 300. I was one of the lucky ones who beat the odds to get in. But if you didn't manage to get into the game, there's still plenty of nightlife. Bienvenidos a Garibaldi, el mariachi les canta el son. De la Negra! We're in Mexico City's famous Garibaldi Square, where seven nights a week, more than 50 mariachi bands wait to be hired for a serenade. <laughs> Along with bull 
fighting and soccer, Mexico's other great passion is music. In this warm outdoor setting, people come with their lovers, friends and family to listen to mariachi, the official music of Mexico. The talented bands that play at the square come from all over the country just to perform in this renowned spot. The celebration continues late into the night at any of the many local mariachi bars. Throughout the city, the house specialty is tequila. As we've discovered, Mexico City is a vibrant collection of heroes and legends, artists and musicians, architecture and archaeology, all competing for the spotlight in the world's largest city. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the variety of Mexico City, everything from mariachis to pyramids to Main Square. For The Travel Magazine, I'm Sandra Neal. Join us again as we travel the world.